Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to a little Autonauts refresher. Autonauts console just launched, and we got a little increase in volume and some extra questions being asked on how to do things. Now, we made a tips and tricks video, but I thought we'd make this even more simple and just start dishing out a couple little tips and tricks and short videos. So today, we're going to talk about early game code specifically for harvesting your early game resources with your basic robots, okay? And this is a code that I used from these little baby robots here all the way to civilization and as you know it. Like my tree farmers, they're Mark III, but they still use the same code I had since the beginning because it is efficient as it can get and it's the same across the board for every single harvestable that you can get. How does it work? I'm going to show you two different ways. I'm going to call it the infinite loop, and then I'm going to call it the cease and desist, okay? So let's start with the infinite loop. Let's look at our clay digger here. So you're going to notice that there's something in common with all of these. They all start off with if hands are empty, move and pick up your tool. It doesn't matter if it's a crude metal tool because you're in the late game, or if it's a crude stone shovel in the beginning, or a pickaxe or anything, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have it set to the correct tool for the correct resource you're using. In this case, for clay digging, we need a shovel or a spade. All right. Followed by, you know, close the loop. So move and take, close the loop. I put move inside of it for these just so they don't get stuck. Because sometimes when you close the game, at least in the PC version, uh, they can get caught at a loop and then just kind of sit in a null until you reset them. So that's why I keep them in the brackets entirely. So that way, if something happens, it'll instantly repeat the loop. Next, you do find the nearest clay deposit or tree or rock or flower, berry, doesn't matter. Find the next deposit, move to it, use the held item, and then put all of that in a forever bracket. So what that'll do is they will never stop doing it unless there's either A, no resource, or B, there's no space for that resource to go. So for instance, when you do, uh, let's, let's just look up here. It would work the same. All these guys are in a forever loop, but you can see that I've got metal ore just sitting on the ground here, but no one's moving. It's because there's no one picking it up. So because it's taking up the space on the ground, they can no longer dig on that tile until someone comes and picks it up. So you can use other bots to make them stop moving. So they're not just forever gathering. Okay. Now that's the basic forever loop. I like this one a lot, but I like to take this a little step further and, and give it an ending. So we've got Lumber Jane over here. And Lumber Jane, let's make this a little more bigly, is our Lumberjack, right? So she is the one who is going to be chopping all of my trees. And I'm gonna use the same exact code for a large group of people, right? Or if you wanna try and segment them, you can change your nearest, you can change the area within your nearest tree, etc. But it starts the same. If hands are empty, always at the top, move to the storage, grab it, and then you come down here. And then here, instead of uh, you know having it being open and stuck in the forever loop, I do a repeat until storage is full. So you just click the little target there and then you select whichever storage it is. And then you do it until that's full. And then they'll find the nearest tree in that area, move to it and use their ax. Now, if this is full, make sure you check this off because that means they will exit the loop sequence if there's no task to do. And then it'll, they'll just end up sitting still because then it'll repeat, come up here. Their hands won't be empty because they'll have a tool in it. And they'll sit there and just repeat and not move, not use up their battery charge until that log storage is not full. And then they'll go and chop trees again. So using that as an example, if I came over here, here's my tree farm for the end game. You know, you can see a lot of trees are still up because I've got all of these. These are my logs. They're pretty much full. That one's almost full. It's getting back there. That's why they're chopping, right? So even these guys, you can see I use the same exact code and these are Mark III. I've got 24 kilobits of free data. You do not need a difficult code. More bots doing simple things will go a long way than one bot trying to do a million things because then you're going to find a bottleneck and you're going to slow down real fast as you progress past tier four, for instance. So that is my tip to you guys for keeping it nice and simple. Keep it simple, stupid. For your basic bot coders, you can see I've got the same thing here for a rock miner. This is just another forever loop. I use the forever loops with miners because those are infinite resources. And so if 
my gatherers don't pick them up, they'll just stop mining and that's the end of it. That way there's a little backlog. And it doesn't cause a lot of lag because they don't pile up, it's just one per tile. Just like I was showing you with the metal ore here. So yeah, brothers and sisters, if you're loving this and you love Autonauts, make sure you hit that like button down below and I'll keep the tips coming for you guys. Some more beginner tips outside of my top 10 tips, which I'll link at the end of this video. If you've never seen it, go watch it now. And also will be a playlist of our full playthrough. If you're curious on how we did it step by step to get in this beautiful working town that is literally the end game, we're done. We, we've transcended. But all right, brothers and sisters, as usual, this has been Shabby Do, and hope the rest of your day is not too shabby.